Chemical Kinetics, the First Order Integrated Rate Law. Okay, so before we talk about the integrated rate law, let's talk a little bit more about these differential rate laws. And I have shown rate laws for three common reaction orders. So the first one is a first order reaction. This is first order overall. And the rate of the reaction is equal to the rate constant multiplied by the concentration of the reactant A to the first power. That's a first order reaction. Lots of reactions fit into this category. Another general category is the second order reaction. And so this is second order overall. Here's the rate of the reaction again, and it's equal to the rate constant multiplied by the concentration of A to the second power. So that's second order overall. Now there's also a zero order reaction, and basically what this means is that there's no dependence of the reaction rate on the concentration of A. So it's A to the zero power. So anything to the zero power is one, so this is just the rate is equal to the rate constant. So for each of those differential rate laws, we can use calculus to integrate the rate law and do that for each of the three common reaction orders. And after we do that and get the integrated rate equation, now we have a practical way to determine the order of a reaction. So how do we do that? Okay, so here's the overview of what we're going to do. So we are going to run an experiment and we're going to collect concentration data versus time. So we're going to measure the concentration of the reactant at time intervals and we're going to record those. Now, I'm going to demonstrate a first order integrated rate law first. So we're going to assume that this reaction is first order and we're going to calculate the natural log of the concentration that we measured for each one of them. So at each time we're going to take the natural log of A. And the natural log of the concentration is just a number. And then we're going to plot that natural log of A versus time. And if it yields a straight line, then the reaction is first order. Okay, so after we use calculus to integrate the differential rate law for a first order process, we are going to get this. So the, the natural log of the concentration of A at time t divided by the initial concentration of A that's going to be equal to negative of the rate constant times time. So A sub naught is the initial concentration of A. A sub t is the concentration of A at some time t during the course of the reaction. So whatever time we have, the corresponding concentration of A goes with that. So this is the concentration of A at time t. So this is just a subscript, it's just a label. Okay, so let's rearrange this equation a little bit, make it a little bit more useful. So using a log rule where the natural log of x divided by y is equal to the natural log of x minus natural log of y, then we can do that here. So now we have the natural log of the concentration of A at time t minus the natural log of the initial concentration of A and that's equal to the negative of the rate constant times t. Let's rearrange it a little bit more. And so now we have the natural log of the concentration of A at time t, and that's going to be equal to negative kt plus the natural log of the initial concentration of A. So this is a linear equation. So this is y equals mx plus b. So we're going to have time on the x-axis and the, the natural log of the concentration of A on the y-axis. Now, a first order reaction is an exponential decay in terms of the reactant. And so here's another form of the integrated rate equation for a first order process. And the concentration of A decreases exponentially over time. So here are the two graphs that correspond to a first order process. The first one is the exponential form. 
not particularly useful, usually, at least from our perspective. But the linear version is highly useful because we can collect data, concentration data, take the natural log of it, and then plot it versus time t. And if we get a straight line, then that means we have a first order process. And the slope of this line is equal to the negative of the rate constant, so negative k. So how do we determine the reaction order using an integrated rate law? So here's a typical data set. We have the time, and all of these times are points where we measured the concentration of A. So we started with 0.25 molar at t equals 0. So that's the initial concentration of A. After 60 seconds, then we had 0.218. After 90 seconds, we were down to 0.204, etc. So we're going to collect data first. And then to find out if this is a first order process, we're going to take the natural log of each of those concentrations. So we're going to do that in the calculator. So you should get out your calculator and make sure that when you put in the natural log of 0.25, you get this number. Then the last step is to take those concentrations, the natural log of A, and plot it versus time. So here are those, co those concentrations that we took the natural log for. And we plotted it versus time. And the plot yielded a straight line. And so that means the reaction fits first order kinetics. Okay, so let's look at it, at it a little bit more closely. So here's the fitted line that Excel made when I made this plot, okay? And so here's negative k up here, so the negative of the rate constant. So that means the rate constant k is equal to 0 0.0023. So 0 0.0023 seconds inverse for this first order process. The natural log of the initial concentration is here, okay, so that's the y-intercept, and x is time t, okay, so that's right here. So because the natural log of all of our concentrations in time, when we plotted those out and it yielded a straight line, then we said that the reaction fits first order kinetics. Okay, so we also need to look for the half-life for a first order process. And the half-life is defined as the time required for one half of a reactant to react. Okay, so here we start with 100% of it. And when we reach half of it, so half of it has reacted, then that is the first half-life. Okay? Now, if we go from that time and we wait for ha another half to disappear, that's the second half-life. Let's wait for another half of it to disappear, and that's the third half-life, and we can keep on doing that. Fourth half-life, fifth half-life. Now, we can define the concentration of A at the half-life time, the first half-life for instance, as one half the initial concentration. Okay, so let's use that to derive an expression for the half-life of a first order process. So remember, we're going to let A sub t at the half-life e be equal to 0 0.5 times A sub naught, or the initial concentration of A. Let's plug that in. So this is where a sub t would be. We're going to plug in 0 0.5 times a sub naught. And then everything else is the same in the integrated first order rate law. We are going to rearrange it using a log rule. Okay, so you can see that natural log of x minus natural log of y. So we can use a log rule to rearrange it into this form. And when we do that, we are going to end up with the natural log of 0.5 times a sub naught 
divided by a sub naught, and that's going to be equal to negative rate constant and times t, and we're going to add a label t1 half since it's at the half-life. So that's just a label. And now we can cancel out the initial concentration of A, and so that's going to leave us with the natural log of 0 0.5 equal to negative rate constant times T half. And remember, this is just a number. So get out your calculator and put the natural log of 0 0.5 in your calculator and you're going to get negative 0 0.693. That's still equal to negative K times T half. We're going to cancel out the negative signs and rearrange and solve for T half. So the half-life for a first order process generally is 0 0.693 divided by the rate constant. Now notice that the half-life for a first order process does not depend on the initial concentration of A. And that's very important to remember. The half-life, the time it takes for half of the initial concentration to react into product does not depend at all on what the initial concentration of A was. Alright, so again, example problems will be posted separately. And next we're going to talk about the second order integrated rate law, which is part five.